for me, it was a journey where I brought that classroom into my home and <laughs> my, my poor oldest child had a stack of workbooks and I wanted him to do every single thing. And it was really hard for me to let a problem go undone. It's okay to give things up sometimes. Yes. It's okay if a curriculum is not working for yes. our kids to give it up. Now you want to give it a chance. You want to give it a fair try, right? And say, okay, is it the kid who's just not having a good attitude about it? Or they just don't, you know, they don't want to learn this particular thing. Or is it the curriculum that's not working? Or is it me who's not doing a good job of teaching it? Or maybe I don't understand the way it's supposed to be taught. I mean, there's so many things that play into what is best to use for our kids. And so it's one of the greatest joys of homeschooling is that we mm -hmm. get to be in control. We get to say, this is working really well for our family. So we're going to go this direction, or this is maybe not working very well. So we're going to eliminate it, yeah. which of course eliminates the clutter. And we're going to move on to something else and maybe pass that curriculum or whatever it is onto a friend who maybe mm -hmm. it will work beautifully for mm -hmm. um, instead. And so how talk really quickly about your, your co-op, because you've got a co-op with over 500 kids in it. Yes. And I'm sure you probably see this a lot. Parents coming in and saying, mm, you know what, this isn't, not the co-op, but you know, this particular curriculum or method or whatever isn't quite working for me. How do you help those parents navigate through figuring out what works best for their family? Starting with that priority step and mm -hmm. then looking at each of your kids as an individual and saying, what, you know, what are the goals for each of my kids? Um, I think for me, it was a journey where I brought that classroom into my home and <laughs> my my poor oldest child had a stack of workbooks and I wanted him to do every single thing. And it was really hard for me to let a problem go undone in there. Even if I almost walked him through it, then we finished the workbook and we did it kind of like what you were saying. Um, and so that's why when I discovered Charlotte Mason and her model of education, it was so freeing for me. And I love to, um, help other moms have confidence that that is a great education. It does not look like a classroom education in a lot of ways um, because it's so much richer. And I think if people really believe that that can actually be a real education, they get very excited and then they start to apply that and their kids come alive and they start to learn mm -hmm. things. And um, just the fruit of it is so good mm -hmm. that um, it does catch on that way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Love it. Okay. So you've got determined priorities and we're talking through these principles of minimalism, um, in our homeschooling. And so the first one you talked about determining our priorities, um, which I think is fantastic and so important. You have to know your why and you have to know where you're going. Yes. Um, and then eliminating clutter. What would be your next point? Um, so then I would say, um, quality over quantity. Um, I think sometimes, you know, there are these little box set of books we can get our elementary students that are twaddle, you know, just yep. <laughs> really kind of low quality language and writing. And so our kids could maybe read 10 books in the time that they could read one quality, rich, um, yeah. rich book. And I think really believing and seeing that that one quality book is more valuable than the 10, mm -hmm. um, even though it looks like your child read more books for their library, you know, thing that they fill yeah, out how many card. books, <laughs> right? Um, and so I, I think just choosing the very best, the very best literature, or mm -hmm. if you do art study, the very best art from the very best artists, and just really exposing your kids to the best of everything so that they crave more of that. And I think then they... Um, have good taste in what they're learning about. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely a journey that I feel like every homeschool parent is on of trying to figure out like, what is the best literature? And of yes. course there's a range from, cause you're talking <laughs> kindergarten through 12th grade. Yeah. Where do you find, do you have a list? And I don't even, I, I didn't see this on your website, but maybe you have something like this. Do you have a list somewhere? Where, how, how do you determine for your family what good literature is and how do you find it? Yeah, um, so we focus on living books, meaning, mm -hmm. you know, books that are making a, something come alive, a person, a place, a time. And so I have done a ton of research on different living books. You can find a lot of living books. Um, different people have put them together. So we do have some living book lists on our on our website. Okay. And um, 
just kind of the best that we've curated and uh, tried to sift through some of them. So yeah, there's a there are more good living books than you could probably ever really get through. Oh yeah. Um, so always more to read. Yes. Yeah. We'll put a link to that in the show notes then. Cause I always love links. I always, especially from people that I trust, cause there's been times where I've gone on Pinterest and just like, you know, yes. for a book list. And I'm like, these books are garbage. What are you talking yes. about? <laughs> I'm yes. not reading these with my kids. <laughs> yes. Um, so I always appreciate when uh, trustworthy homeschool moms, Christian homeschool moms, provide good book lists. So I will definitely put a link to that in the show notes so that people can find those and I'll check it out myself too. We're always looking for new stuff Yes, and uh, figuring out what else we can read. Um, That's the next best thing. And I'll say just kind of like with um, eliminating clutter with curriculum, we've done the same with with books. My daughters and I were just reading through a book and we got more than halfway through it and the other day, I, they both looked bored. And I just said, are you girls enjoying this book? And they're like, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> and I just thought, you know what, there's there's just not yep. enough time um, in the day yep. to read books where you just feel like, meh, about it, especially when you're more than halfway through. So I said, you know what, let's choose another book. So we just got a new book that we're going to start reading. Um, and I'm okay with putting that book yeah. down. I'm not one who feels like I have to get to the end of the book. Um, just like, I don't feel like I have to get to the end of the curriculum in order for it to be effective. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 